the toss, deferring to the second half. The Tigers will get the football first. And they'll start off first down and 10 from the 25-yard line as we go downstairs to Molly. What a scene. And, hey, it's that time for Clemson, Molly. Yeah, that's right, Mark. Clemson's Davo Sweeney splits every year into four phases. And when the calendar hits November 1st, it is officially their championship phase. He told me this is where we want to peak. We haven't played our best football yet. But in order to do that, we have to focus on ourselves. And you can see he takes that very seriously. The season schedule in their practice facility has no mention of the opponent each week. Just a tiger paw, the date and the location of the game. He explained, our preparation never about the opponent, whether it's Louisville or Alabama, we prepare the same way. Mark? It's all about what they do. First down and 10. All right, Molly, here we go. Underway, Lawrence pulls the trigger into the boundary complete to T. Higgins, their leading receiver. And he picks up a few yards and cleans it off to a good start. Mark Jones alongside, chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. Partner. What's up, man? We wait for this time of the year, November, yeah, right? November. This is where championships <laughs> start to develop, right? People start making their pushes for conference, division, and for Clemson, the college football player. And ETN ready for the playoff and a lot more, but there's a flag down in the field back at the 31-yard line. We're going to see what this flag is all about, but a great burst for 35 yards if it stands. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 94, 15-yard penalty, first down. So it's going to stand. And Clemson, after two plays already deep in Louisville territory. Here's a look at what happened a moment ago. Be a face mask. Big hole off the right side. And Travis Etienne is playing unbelievably well. Speed, burst, and explosive running back. He's playing his best football right now for this Clemson offense. Already down inside the 20-yard line. First down and 10. Lawrence on target again inside the 10-yard line complete to T. Higgins. Hey. The college football playoff standings came out this week. Clemson number two. Just how good is this Clemson squad? I think this team has the ability to compete and play for a national championship. To me, it's the only team I've seen that can get on the field and potentially beat Alabama this year. Wow. They are deep, they are experienced, and they've got great veteran leadership on this team. Lawrence hands it off over the left side. ETN, touchdown, Tigers! Well, Bart, you know, one thing about this Clemson offense, the offensive line has really stepped up. They've been more physical. They've been able to run the football, protect their quarterback. Quick work in that opening drive. A couple of quick passes from the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, and then Travis Etienne with some nice runs. Well, you talk about a laser-focused team on an opening drive. The extra point good. The Tigers... Out in front, 7-0, ETN with his eighth consecutive game with a rushing touchdown. That was the 15th of the season for him. Going to pull the backside guard, just a counter backside. Powerful running. Travis ETN running through multiple arm tackles. He's not the biggest running back, and he's powerful. 44, Garrett Williams with a nice block. He's not going to be stopped before he hits the end zone. ETN telling us a little bit earlier how he really valued his time in the weight room during the offseason last year. Went from 185 to 200 pounds. He says, I've been drinking all of my protein shakes. <laughs> and it paid off. Paid big dividends on that run. And what a start for Clemson. Four plays, they're in the end zone. take it out this is Hassan Hall Bobby Petrino has been wanting to get him sprung loose a little bit better on kickoff returns he's tackled on the play it'll be first down and 10 from there this is what ETN said 
on choosing Clemson. He is a native of Louisiana. The Tigers, during the recruitment process, slow played him. And he ended up choosing the Tigers as a result. And Clemson didn't get on him until December of his junior year. They got on him late. So he's ready to go back down there and wreak a little habit at some point. Say it's worked out very well for both sides. Clemson very happy to have Etienne Jr. And man, he's happy to be here. First and 10, a pass incomplete. Jawan pass under heavy pressure. Good pressure by Furl. Waylon Furl, as we take a look at Jawan Pass, starting quarterback, completing 55% of his passes, has eight touchdown tosses against seven interceptions this year. Been a tough and steep learning curve for him. They started this season against Alabama. They thought he played pretty well, stayed in the pocket, stayed tough. Kind of, you know, back and forth with Malik Cunningham the next couple games. Cunningham starts against Virginia, and since then, Puma Pass been playing his best football. They're going to run it. This is 2-2 Atwell on the shuffle pass. Bobby Petrino, ninth year as head coach on the sidelines for the Cardinals. It's been a very trying and laborious year for him. But he says that his players have worked hard, especially this week in practice. They haven't given up. It hasn't been the type of season they've wanted it to be, certainly, at 2-6 and six coming in. But they continue... To work to get better. It's a dangerous spot right here. Third and seven plus. Watch for Brett Venables to bring pressure. And that D-line of Clemson flat out get after you. Pass, tackle, and set. Back at the 25 by Austin Bryant. And a quick three and out for the Cardinals. But oh boy, this defensive line is as good as it gets in college football. Just a simple speed rush. Watch him work his hands on the offensive tackle. Excellent hand works. Actually, he's working on Hassan Hall. Quick, quick rip. Gets up the field. And Juwan passed no chance as the pressure got there in no time. That was Clemson's 27th sack of the season. It's a tough matchup on a running back, Hassan Hall, to deal with a 6'6", 280-pound defensive end coming off the edge. Yeah, that didn't look fair. Rodgers back for this punt, brought down immediately right around the 30-yard line, a 45-yard punt. Landon Akakbo with the tackle on the play. Orange is the prevail. All that Georgia Tech Clemson game, you thought that Trevor Lawrence was ultimately going to be the guy it proved to be the case. It was so apparent when you watched that game, his ability to throw the football down the field, the athleticism, throwing on the move, and now it's his time to roar. He's the vocal leader of this offense. Now that Kelly Bryant's moved on, you see golden arm there. Nate Woody, the Georgia Tech deep coordinator, told us he's got a golden arm to make every throw. 6'6", 215. He's got the NFL frame as well. Right out of central passing and right up the middle. Feaster. Tavian Feaster. Feasting. Eating. Touchdown, Tigers. 70 yards. They've had five plays and put 13, soon to be 14 points on the board. Feaster with his third rushing touchdown of the season. These Tigers are good. Hugo with the extra point. Seal it off on the backside, get up to the second level. Huge gaping hole. Feaster sees it and he takes it to the house. Quick work on two quick touchdowns for this high octane Clemson offense. Well, Dabo Sweeney got his team's attention early in the week when he called Louisville the best two and six team he's seen. This is Hall on the return out beyond the 20 yard line. And he says that you win from the inside out. And what you see on the field right here is a manifestation of the culture that Sweeney has been able to establish here at Clemson, a team that my partner said a moment ago is the only team with an opportunity of matching up and defeating Alabama. That is what you said, right? Both sides of the ball. I look at this defense, this offense. They're the most well-equipped to take the field and potentially take down the Crimson Tide. 
First down and 10 for the Cardinals. Hassan Hall met right away. Folks, it's not just week 10 of the college football season. It's Statement Saturday. And we've got a doubleheader for you with college football implications. Starting in the Big Ten, number 14, Penn State of the Big House, taking on number 5, Michigan, 3 435 Eastern. Then number 4, Notre Dame against Northwestern, 715 Eastern. Both games are on ESPN and live on the ESPN app, so you can watch that game, those games, anywhere. What a slate of games today, Ooh. James. Man, great football going on. Make sure that uh, phone is charged up to watch it on the app if you have to. Pass complete underneath. That's Jalen Smith, and Smith with the first first down of the day for Louisville. Jalen Smith is the leader of that offense, really, as a receiver, but it's been a slow start for him just now finding his way offensively. Picks up 17. They have to get Jalen Smith going early and often. A little shallow crosser runs away from the defender. He's the best player they have on offense. 6'4", 220, NFL pedigree, slow start to the season. As you mentioned, he's really picked it up the last couple of weeks. They need him to show up big against this defense. Complete. They're going to mark it about the 46-yard line. Jalen Smith, again, Dusty, what do you see as some of the keys today? Well, Jalen Smith, first and foremost, they've got to get him going within this offense because they don't have a lot of playmakers offensively. They want to slow the pace down but get him going, and then they need the ball to bounce their way. As far as Clemson, it's championship phase. The road to Tampa Bay. They had it up in their facility yesterday. It's about them focusing on themselves and getting better in each position on both sides of the ball. RTTB. That's the acronym. Trey Smith, who had a big week last week. Nice game. Had three touchdowns last week. He's their physical between the tackles type of runner. Nice job off the right side. Dusty, Dude, wanna, opened up. Sorry, Dusty, want to ask you about their huddling, which is a departure from the norm for them, right? They want to slow this thing down, man. They want to help their defense and struggle this year by keeping that Clemson offense over on the side. First down, slow the game down. Methodical drives is what this Louisville team needs. Play fake by Jamal Pass. Under duress, that ball is out there loose. And he's tackled right around midfield by Kendall Joseph, one of those talented defenders. But watch the defensive line. Watch, I mean, there's nowhere to go. Cleveland Furl. You've also got Austin Bryant coming off the edge. Both these guys, it's a good job by Puma Pass just being able to keep something alive for a little bit. But you can see this defensive line, as good as you'll find anywhere in college football, three first-round picks that I see up front. And you've already been able to tell early on they're playing on the other side of the ball tough for this Louisville offensive line. Well, those guys up front said they wanted to come back school and finish the business they had. They wanted to play together, right? I mean, they truly value one another. And second and long, they're going to hand it off again to Trey Smith. Brought down by Christian Wilkins. Trey Smith had three touchdowns last week in that loss for Louisville. Trey Smith is the son of former NFL star Jimmy Smith played for Jacksonville. Played for Coach Petrino yeah. in Jacksonville. Yeah. How about Christian Wilkins, though, man? I love this kid. I love his spirit, his smile. He thinks he's too odd for Brent Venables, not bringing any pressure. Plenty of time for Puma. Pass steps up in the pocket and delivers a nice strike on the sidelines. First and 10. A little sweep action to Trey Smith. Couldn't get to the edge. Brought down a nice gain, though, of eight on the play. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, he is a monument to intensity and passion on the sidelines. Just got to keep him off the field. He's got to get back, Coach, for that now. <laughs> the, uh, one of the strength conditioning coaches, Smotherman, who I, uh, right here, his job is to... There you go, see him getting him back. I'll tell you a story about that later. I talked to them in the pregame about how that came about. Man, they look attached at the hit, literally. Tackle on the play. 
on Trey Smith. One yard gain. It'll be third and short here as Thomas makes the tackle. And Xavier Thomas, the true freshman. I'm talking about explosive off the football. Great get up. He still doesn't even quite know what he's doing. But week in and week out, when you pop in the film, you see this guy continue to make more plays. Got a bright future ahead of him in that Clemson orange. Yeah, Venable's telling us Thomas runs a 4-5-40 for 260 pounds. You were running 4-5 coming down that hill or yeah. right? I was, absolutely. <laughs> Got to get off like get up easily and he wears the number two. Third and one. And they're going to pick up the first down. Colin Wilson, so that's good for Louisville in the sense that keeps that defense off the field. Well, what it is, it's ahead of the chains, right? First down, a seven-yard run, so now they're in second, third, manageable. It's exactly what Bobby Petrino talked about yesterday. They've got to eliminate the negative plays, stay in front of the chains, and allow themselves the opportunity to slow this game down and move the football down the field. Under six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Louisville under siege early. Down two quick scores. And Wilson in the backfield. On past the quarterback. Pass throws a nice looking out pattern complete to Devontae Pete, who came into the game with 16 receptions, one of their leading receivers. Hey, I talked about my partner running a 4 5 40 coming downhill, that hill at the end of the stadium. We. We, 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 did the, we did the thing, folks. Not going to lie. We'll, we'll show it to you a little bit later. So, Dusty, your first trip here. We got a chance to do the hill thing like the team does prior to the game. I've been blown away with everything <laughs> I've seen at Clemson from the facilities to all the surroundings to here at the stadium. And yeah, man, we saw the hill there. We had, we had to get a little taste of what it's like. Second down and three. Nice run between the tackles and a... First down get by Colin Wilson. Now, this is an impressive looking drive for Louisville. Six yard gain. I like what they've got going on. How about the offensive line up front doing a nice job getting some movement. A little slant there. They're bringing Trey Lamar up front. Got a timeout on the. I mean, it's everywhere. An ocean of. of orange right there here at Memorial Stadium. I flew in yesterday to Greenville. And there was orange everywhere. Yeah. It was unbelievable. So it was Friday. And, man, everyone. Dusty, it's a little challenging matching with orange. That's all I'm going to say. I love it. Sartorially speaking, with your clothes, it's tough to match with orange. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 13th play of the drive coming up for the Cardinals. Two tight ends, two wide outs, single back formation. Boy. Christian Wilkins was right in Juwan Pass's face, and he had nowhere to go. He's a ball player, man. Been watching this kid for a lot of years, up front in the middle. Yeah, just a nice rip, using his hands, getting up the field, putting the pressure on Juwan Pass. He's got great hips, great hands, a motor that never stops. Talk about a guy that plays hard. Everything you want in a football player, and maybe his personality is even better than his play on the field, a guy that truly embodies what it means to be a Clemson Tiger. And another stoned stop by Colin Wilson. Christian Wilkins making another tackle. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, says that his personality, Wilkins, is really infectious. It pervades the locker room, brings a great sense of joy to that locker room. He plays hard, but Dusty, as you noted, these guys know, Wilkins knows when to flick that switch and when business starts and play ends. They have fun, but when it's time to focus and lock in, they do that as well. Third and 13. One pass complete. And it's short of the first down, complete to Jalen Smith. About four yards shy of the first down. A gain of eight on the play, and Bobby Petrino is going to send in his field goal unit to try and put some points on the board. Next second down play, the tackle for loss. That's exactly what Bobby Petrino and Louisville want to eliminate, right? Because then you're sitting here in third and 13 situation. That becomes very tough and problematic. Clemson able to get the stop and force the field goal attempt. Brent McCreeky is six for six on the season. This one coming from 25 yards out. 
Looking for a response to the early flurry of points by the Tigers. And they get on the scoreboard. Dabo Sweeney imploring his team from the sidelines. He loves a bunch of different sports, including holding 14 to 3. And another sellout crowd here at Memorial Stadium. Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath down in the field. Tigers receiving the kickoff. And they'll take it first and 10 from their own 25. We were talking about Coach Sweeney a moment ago, and uh, he loves to play basketball against his sons. He's got some very talented sons who are athletes as well. And his goal is to not let them beat him before he turns 50. Now, his son Drew had him once in hoops, you know, in basketball, and then didn't quite win. But he says he's got to watch out for Clay because Clay's son Clay might be one of the most dynamic of the group of athletes. He's got to be wary of him, Molly. Mark, my favorite part is that Dabo Sweeney challenges his recruits to one-on-one -on -one basketball, and he says none of them have ever beat him. He's not going easy on them just because he wants them to come here. <laughs> yeah, good strategy. Undefeated. They got that basketball court out back. That pass incomplete. As part of the facilities, Dusty, you were talking about earlier. He takes them out there. Pass plays interference. Horse. Defense. Number two. 15-yard penalty. First down. There's a flag on the play, and that's going to go against Chandler Jones. So it'll be first and ten. Chandler Jones, too much contact with the receiver down the field. Good call by the official. But Coach Sweeney likes those multi-sport athletes, guys that play basketball, play baseball, amongst other sports. Helps for more well-rounded athletes. He says he loves defensive linemen like Christian Wilkins to play with Hoop. ETN off the right side, got a first down, and then some. Still on his feet. Let's go back to the studio. Now for the All-State Mayhem moment. We had special teams at the shoe. Isaac Armstrong back to punt for Nebraska. Keandre Jones blocks it out of the end zone for a safety. Buckeyes tack on a touchdown, 9-7 towards the end of the first quarter. All right, Tumble down the field, and Lawrence pounces on the ball. ETN and Lawrence had a little malfunction at the junction there. One of the few miscues so far early in the first uh, quarter here. Two and a half minutes to go. You can stream college football all season long on ESPN+. Plus. So start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. Second down, Adam Choice in the backfield. Choice takes it up the middle. Gets down to the 27-yard line, tackled by P.J. Blue. Sweeney telling us he still coaches uh, under-15 baseball as well. Coach keeping his uh, his fingers in a lot of different things. He has as much fun, but at the same time, gets you know his players focus. They dial in when they have to, but you can just tell being around the facility. There's a joy, yeah. a fun nature around this program. Certainly, Lawrence. He stopped up at about the 24-yard line, and uh, that's the guy that they have to keep healthy. Burns making the tackle on the play. Remember in that game, immediately after he became QB1 and took over the starting job, he was injured in the game against Syracuse. Get down, take care of your body. I think the one thing people don't realize, he's a heck of an athlete. He can really run, escape ability, and can make great throws on the move. Hands it off here to Choice. And Choice is brought down inside the 20-yard line, picked up five on the play. They want to strike balance, right? Earlier in the year, they had games they were running for three, 400 yards a game, but they weren't throwing for big numbers. Last couple of games, they've thrown for over 300. They haven't run it as effectively. They'd like to strike a 250-250 balance, being able to run it and throw it equally well. Quick screen pass to Kendrick, and Kendrick... Wrestled out of bounds right around that first down marker. He picked up six, and by virtue of the spot, it looks like he got enough with under a minute to play here in the first quarter. They'll give him a first down. Lawrence grew up in Cartersville, Georgia, just uh, about 42 miles from Atlanta. First down and 10. On the pitch, ETN getting to the edge. And a good open 
midfield tackle at the 12 yard line by pass. Boy, that was a nice tackle to limit the gain to just two yards. Excellent in the open field. Kane pass, the safety is going to be flying downhill the alley. It's just him and pass. Pass that make that play. ETN's going to the end zone. Nice job getting there and getting a talented running back on the ground. That's going to be in the first quarter of play. Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers offense scoring 14 points in the first five plays of this football game. Folks, we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. The football threatening to punch another one in. From the 11 yard line. Lawrence into the end zone. Easy pitch and catch. Higgins with a touchdown. Well, the way Clemson's been running the football, it's going to set up a lot of play action pass. And he finds T. Higgins, a future star outside on the slant. Beautiful pitching catch. Just an easy play for this Clemson offense. You get those linebackers, safeties downhill, middle of the field's wide open. Passes on the money for T. Higgins. And Trevor Lawrence has really taken over this football team. We see it on the field with the productive numbers that come out, but it's also in the locker room as a focal leader. He's taking and real ownership of this offense. And man, it is fire on all cylinders right now, partner. It certainly is. That's T. Higgins' seventh touchdown catch of the season. And today's unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. Trevor Lawrence says Clemson starting quarterback 4 and 0 oh since taking over in the wake of the Georgia Tech game. And his stats are impeccable. And when you look at his potential, what, what, what do you make of his ceiling? How high, high is How it? high you want to go? <laughs> what, what, what Jordan say? The ceiling is the roof? Yeah. The ceiling is the roof for that kid. I mean, he's just, he's that kind of guy, man. And, you know, what I, I found interesting was Dabo Sweeney was talking about from the first day he got there, you know, his commitment to being in the film room, to having an understanding of the offense, not just a talent with, the, you know, the physical gifts that he has, but also a true student of the game who's really taken to this offense and has a full grasp of everything that's going on. You don't always see that yeah. from an incoming two freshmen. A little bigger than we thought in running into him yesterday at the practice facility, too. He's slapped together pretty well. I think he, he's got a frame with an old 235, 240 pretty easy. He's got a lot of blow to do still. On the return, this is Hassan Hall. They've been looking to spring him loose. It won't happen this time. Tackled at the 17-yard line, you know. Lawrence actually had a couple of early wow moments, and they started back as a youngster. Still got that same kind of flowing hair for a while. Yeah, yeah. Youth football leagues all the way through. A gifted and talented quarterback. And he's already got a cult following here in <laughs> Clemson and Anderson, South Carolina, surrounding area. Look, I might have the better hair, man. Yeah. <laughs> Good look. we get a shampoo deal in a minute. First down and 10 for the Cardinals. Pass with plenty of time, which has been rare. And incomplete at the 22 yard line, intended for Jalen Smith, who was the closest receiver. Hey, Mark, Dabo Sweeney really frustrated with his pass defense. He got into his secondary about their coverage on Jalen Smith, saying, You have to challenge him. I need more fight out of you guys. So this team not satisfied with that early lead. The defense is frustrated. They're locked in after giving up that field goal. Well, Molly, they're listening because as a play action pass, they wanted to go deep down the field on a deep post. Outstanding coverage by Trayvon Mullen, as well as Kay Kayvon Wallace down the field. So, Molly, Dabo's not happy in the defense. They're listening. Between the tackles, Trey Smith with nowhere to go. Might have gotten a yard on the play. Okay, so Dabo's upset with his DBs. And they're leading 21 to 3. He just wants tighter coverage. Okay. I mean, listen, man, that's what you have to do, right? You okay. Can't. I'm just we're, saying we're it's 21 3. The top. Okay. It's not about the opponent. Okay. It's about them getting better each and every play. He has to challenge these guys. He can't let them be complacent. And see, this is where Louisville doesn't want to be. Third and long situations, defensive line, pin their ears back and go get the quarterback. Burrow coming with some heat underneath. 
Great straight arm and run by Jalen Smith. He's the playmaker that's going to have to move the chains for them as he does there to pick up 11 in a first down. We said it from the onset. They need Jalen Smith to show up and show out today. Well, a shallow crosser, and he runs away from the coverage. Missed tackle on the open field by Kayvon Wallace. You see him lower his head. He might want to put that football away, but a huge pickup on a third and nine. Move the chains. Yeah, four catches for him so far, a total of 45 yards. Keeps the drive and the chains moving. Backside heat, fumble. The ball came out, but it looked like the Cardinals pounced on the loose ball. J.D. Davis made the hit to knock it loose from pass. Well, there's a lot going on here. We got games up front. I want you to watch from the right side. There's a text game going on. You got pressure off the edge. You've got Christian Wilkins beating his man. I mean, basically, it's a party at the quarterback, and all the Clemson defenders are meeting right there. Wow, sure looked that way. Yeah. Yeah. Loss of four on the play. Second and 14. receiver formation and get a flag down on the field. All start. Offense. Number 85. Five yard penalty. Second down. Remember, Molly showed us this earlier. It's all about Clemson. It's all about us, what we do, not the opponent. That's why Dabo Sweeney is getting on his DBs. That's why Dabo Sweeney isn't happy when the coverage isn't the way it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting ready to win something much bigger than this game just yeah. here today. You're right. You're right. 21-3, but you're right. RTTB. Road to Tampa Bay. Second and 19 after the penalty. Delay a game. Man. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. You talk about self-destruction and self-inflicted damage. You get a sack on first down, so that's a negative play you can't have. Then you get a false start. Then you get to delay a game. I mean, this is exactly what Bobby Petrino told us yesterday. Can't happen for his offense to have success against this defense. Second and 24. Screens, draws, something easy for Juwan Pass. Smith split wide to the top of your screen. He looks that way, and he's picked off. Pick six. Simmons with the touchdown. Accuracy has been an issue for Jawan Pass throughout the course of this season. Overshoots his intended target right into the hands of Isaiah Simmons as he walks into the end zone. Four straight mistakes for the Louisville offense. It starts with a sack, two penalties, now you're backed up. Inaccurate pass, and the Clemson defense puts six on the board. With 11.42 to go in the first half, Clemson leading 28 to three. Louisville down by 25, and a big reason for their lack of success is their lack of leadership. Their coaches told us their best leader is Jonathan Grenard, who's been out all year with a wrist injury. He hasn't traveled all year, but coaches called him this Thursday, asked him to travel. He's here for moral support to keep the team positive and energized. And with such a young group, that leadership is vital. He's been coaching up his D-line this entire game. Hopefully they can get something going, guys. Yeah, right now pretty desperate, Molly, and they could use his talent and inspiration on the field. That's what I was going to say. They yeah. need more than just his leadership. They need his playmaking ability, something they've been devoid of for much of this season. Uh, Clemson today firing on all cylinders. A couple of quick touchdown scores in the first five plays of the game. A pick six a moment ago. And with 11.42 to go in the first half, a commanding 28-3 lead. Cardinals first down and 10 from the 25 against the number two ranked Clemson Tigers. Hassan Hall in the backfield. The 
Monty Crum in motion. Yeah, Smith on the run. Hall on the run, pardon me. Well, kick off your week nine tomorrow with a special edition of Sunday NFL Countdown. Live from NOLA, Drew Brees and the Saints get set to host the undefeated Rams. Plus, before they face off Sunday, relive one of the wildest college football games ever. Mike as Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield combined for 125 points. And Corso joins the gang in the Big Easy for the headgear pick. That was a game. crazy game in Lubbock, man. Couple what do you years remember ago? about it? Uh, no defense, but I remember. <laughs> hey, matching up against an Iowa, but OU takes their top 10 ranking on the road. Yes. Owen Wilson tackled, and a flag down on the field as well. How many points was that? 125. Don't even. That's big. Tw that was big. That's kind of. It's tough in the Holding. Big 12. Holding. Offense. Number 61. <laughs> 10 yard penalty. It's tough in the Big 12, man. Second down. That was disturbing for a former <laughs> defensive guy. Now, I will say, right. Patrick Mahomes, Baker Mayfield, pretty good players, but still, with some of the tackling, some of the coverages, ooh, it was uh, less than desirable if you're a defensive minded person. You know, we got quite a few backups right now along the defensive line. It was interesting. I was down the, the field before the game talking to an NFL scout, and I said, Who's the best pro prospect out here? And he started laughing. He said, There's too many to count. Talking about the Clemson team. He said, Clemson. Clemson's got backup defensive linemen that might be drafted. Get a chance to see some of those right now. I like 67, Albert Huggins, working on the inside. Huggins number 67. They get good push on that offensive defensive line there. A little pressure on pass as he tried to pass it. Mullen in on the coverage on Devontae Pete. This is statement Saturday. Several pivotal, critical games today. Talked about LSU Alabama later tonight. Notre Dame Northwestern. How about Georgia Kentucky? What a job Mark Stoops has done. That's for the SEC East Championship. And if Alabama wins, they lock up the SEC West already yeah. in the first week in November. Crazy. Notre Dame trying to keep themselves undefeated. That's going to be tough there in Evanston. Yeah, what a great season you talked about it by Mark Stoops and the Kentucky Wildcats in stark contrast to their state neighbors Louisville struggling right now wide open at the 33 yard line complete for the first down to Des Fitzpatrick and that's gonna raise the ire of coach Sweeney a 23 yard game Molly talked about him not being happy with the secondary we've highlighted the defensive line of Clemson a lot look at this pocket he's gonna be able to step up and get exactly what he wants down the field find Des Fitzpatrick on the sidelines a little bit of a wobbly pass but an outstanding job by the Louisville offensive line giving poor pass plenty of time to step into that throw Jeremy Smith in the backfield pass checked into something different we get a nice gain on this running play and Jeremy Smith the 6'2 senior picks up nine this a nice job by Caleb, Caleb Chandler. He's getting his first start. You're going to see him pull around. Sorry, I, I drew it the wrong way. Pull around, get Isaiah Simmons on the outside. Big hole opens up in the middle for another first down. This Louisville offense. Caleb Chandler getting a start today. First time he started on the offensive line. They run it again. Jeremy Smith once again picked up a little over a yard. Nolan Turner making the tackle on the play. Approaching nine minutes to go here in the first half. Bobby Petrino has said that these kids have battled and shown tremendous resolve this week. The notice out there on the Clemson defense, a lot of different numbers out there. They rotate and roll guys as much as anybody I've seen in college football and allows them to create the depth that they have on this team. Nowhere to go for Smith. Well, Dusty, you know Sweeney's philosophy is to reward hard work with playing time. He's not afraid to rotate in inexperienced players. In the last six games, Clemson has averaged over 73 players contributing per game. That's every single travel squad player. And versus NC State, they had 86 players participate. So that's definitely helping with their depth. Makes your practices pretty lively, too, right? Absolutely. If guys that deserve to play, they're going to be more bought in. They're going to be more accountable. There's competition. 
That's how you create depth. They've done a fantastic job here at Clemson. They come with some pressure here. And pass wisely. Got it to his receiver. Boy, 2-2 Atwell. Out of Miami, Florida makes the catch, but nowhere to go. Covered immediately. Brought down by Austin Bryant, who was putting pressure, actually, on the quarterback. Let's see if he actually went down and was able to catch it. Ball's very close to the ground. Uh, ball looks like it may have touched the ground. And there's a flag down on the far side of the field as well. That, might, that did. Well, from that angle, it's tough to tell. Ooh. There are two fouls on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against number 86 of the offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct against number 8 of the defense. Those penalties offset. This is their first. And that is Trey Smith. That's Trey Smith, the son of Jimmy Smith, limping off the field, being attended to by the training staff for the Cardinals. He's their top running threat coming into the ball game. Most physical guy they have out of the backfield. They wanted to be able to establish a rushing attack, and Trey Smith was going to be a big part of that. Had loss for this offense. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Fourth down. That's the right call. Yeah, that ball yeah. looked like it had touched the ground. We got a timeout on the field. Actually, we're going to keep it right here. 7.46 to go in the first half. Amari Rogers back on his own 10 yard line, ready to get this punt from Mason King. King puts the nose of the football down. And Rogers calls for the fair catch just inside the 10 yard line, 40 yards. On the punt, first and ten Tigers. Orange clad, orange the color along with blue in the sky today. Fans waiting for another score. So they, they don't care about our noon starts. They're I mean, detailed. So. Right here, <laughs> That's man. detailed. Go back. How about the detail? Well, Twelve o'clock would be on the nose, I guess. I don't know. They run it on first and ten. Tavian and the Feast who had that long touchdown run a little bit earlier. Picks up about six yards on the play. Talked about the balance that this Clemson offense is trying to achieve. And have a better shot of doing it with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. Second down and four. Little trips left formation. Gets it out quick, complete. Number 88, Braden Galloway. There's a flag down on the field. Let's see if this reception stands. It'd be a first down out at the 23. Illegal formation. Offense. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Second down. Hmm. Now you kind of mentioned they're able to get that balance with Trevor Lawrence at, at the quarterback spot. You know, he gets them back to where they were with Deshaun Watson, right? He can make all the throws against the defense. You pop in that NC State tape, some of the deep throws outside the number of throws he was making. That all of a sudden, man, defenses look at that, and now all of a sudden they have to overcompensate to defend the pass outside the numbers, which opens up the run game. They work hand-in-hand, -hand, and he's a game-changer for this offense. Little blitz coming. Lawrence sidesteps it in wisely, using great discretion. Throws it away. Well, we talk There's about the fun, but it's not all fun and games for Coach ball Sweeney. As he Third goes down. after one of his receivers. Oh, he's demanding now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. listen, he's still a coach, and yeah. he's still going to demand. He's going to hold his players accountable and demand the most out of them. But I'm sure when the camera's off, he's going to go put his arm around him, right. hug him, and love on him a little bit. Nice blitz there on that last play by C.J. Avery. Making Trevor Lawrence move off the spot. Third and nine. They've scored on every possession so far. Incomplete. And for the first time today, we will see the punter, Will Spears. That pass intended for Thompson. Trevor Lawrence had a little bit of pressure there. Took a shot as he delivered the pass. Pass behind his intended target. Nice job by the Louisville defense getting off the field. Forcing the first punt of the afternoon for Clemson offense. 
Spires averaging 39.5 yards per game punting. Burns, one of the most electric punt returners in college football, leads the ACC in third in the country with over 16 yards per return. Let's see if he has an opportunity, a low line drive kick. And Burns got drilled at the 48 yard line. There's about three flags that were thrown on the play. Justin Ross. He may be actually out of this knows. game, partner. That's actually Terrell. It's two number eights. I think they're going to hit him for potential targeting. Yeah, here. he appeared to have the crown of his helmet pointed in the wrong direction. That boy, boy uh, over there talking to his. Burns took a hit. Mm hmm. We're going to review this one. AJ Terrell in on the tackle. There are two fouls on the play. During the kick, holding. Offense number 86. During the return, personal foul. Targeting number eight, picking team. That play is under further review. Here's another look at it. Correction. Both fouls are against the receiving team. No, wait a minute. That's not right. Both against the receiving team. Well, the punting which team. Louisville. They're a little confused down there on the field, partner. Yeah, folks, we'll try and sort it out for you and get the word from them on the other side of this. Different. Here's one more look at the play. Number eight for Clemson is A.J. Terrell. And you see his helmet make contact with the kick returner, Burns. And the one thing I would say that the teaching point, he doesn't keep his eyes up and see what he hits. Okay, he turns his head to the side, and that's whenever he gets the contact on the side of his helmet behind the face mask. There's a look at the tenets of the targeting rule. And it says any forcible hit with the crown of the helmet, and they deem the crown of the helmet anything behind the face mask. Okay. It looks like we have a resolution here. Because when we were going to commercial, we heard the officials say that they were both, both penalties were on the receiving team. So they have hit the brakes on the momentum of this game. He's given an explanation to the coaches, just not to the rest of us in the stadium. One more look. Big impact, mm. helmet to helmet. Glad both guys were able to get up. Love to know what the conversation yeah, on the yeah. field is. There are two fouls on the play, which will offset. However, they're targeting against number eight, stands. Therefore, we will replay the down, fourth down. Well, the crowd here is upset about it. I don't know if they were able to get the same view here inside the stadium that, that we were, but well, that means. Terrell is ejected. Is disqualified yeah, he forgot action. to tell us that. The, the penalties offset, so they're going to have to repunt the football. New new returner is going to be out there, so I wonder if Burns is shaken up from that hit to the head. Yeah, he took a big one. And I don't think that there was any, you know, malice towards what Terrell was doing. I don't think that it was intentional, but at the same time, they are trying to do everything they can in the game of football to get that out of the game. I would just urge people at home, see what you hit. 
see what you hit. Watch him turn his head. So now he doesn't have control on what he's hitting. Eyes up, see what you hit. Use your face, not the top of your helmet. Des Fitzpatrick is back for this punt. Another high spiral. Fitzpatrick calls for the fair catch at the 45 yard line. So, Tigers, by awarding the best student section of the year, go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and see how your school can compete. First down and 10 for Louisville. Colin Wilson brought down near midfield, picked up five yards in the play. Solid first down run, exactly what this Louisville offense needs to do. Decent hole in the middle and a good jump cut. Dusty, let me ask you this. Terrell, Terrell out of the game because of that targeting. Do you let Juwan Pass take a shot at the next man up? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it looks like Mario Goodrich, two freshmen in down here at the bottom of your screen. I think it's a great point. Working down here. They're going to run it for the first down. Wilson with a strong surge inside the 40, picking up 12. Colin Wilson running with some confidence so far early in this game. Third nice run that he's had. Kind of gets into the line of scrimmage, gets skinny. Nice pickup on second down. From the 38, first and 10. Pass. Going to try and take off on his own. Still on his feet. And is brought down at about the 32-yard line. So, Dusty, I heard you use a phrase a moment ago. You said, get skinny. That's right. That's not happening anytime soon. Well, me neither, man. I'm a former <laughs> defensive what lineman. You, show me what it means to well, get skinny. Well, you can get skinny as a defensive lineman. You can get yeah. skinny as a running back. So a normal, a normal rush, let's say we're just coming here, right? right. All right, I'm on you. If I want to get skinny, I'm gonna I'm gonna get skinny, I'm gonna flip my hips. Okay, we saw that running back. Right. He had his shoulder square, and then when he made a jump cut, he got skinny, got through the hole, and he got get a nice skinny. pickup. All get right. skinny, man. I thought you had Slim a special up. I thought you had a magic pill for me somewhere. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> Second and five. Yeah, this Louisville Let's offense is moving here. Colin Louisville. Wilson got skinny a couple plays and moved the ball down the field uh, on the fringe. You can't do this to yourselves. You can't underestimate your opponent. I need you to lock it in and reset, Mark. Molly, the defense looking at a second and five for Louisville right now. They empty out the backfield. A little pressure coming. Pass got it away and incomplete at the 30-yard line. Good pressure by Trey Lamar, who is coming. Trey Lamar is a very good blitzing linebacker. Dial it up here, coming off the edge. Big hit on the quarterback. Unaccounted for. He's a big linebacker, 6'4", 255, downhill. He does a nice job timing up those blitzes when Brent Venables allows him to come bring the pressure. So Cleveland Furl listening in on whatever pass was telling his lineman. And it went off of his lineman's backside. Linwood Foy hit him in the back of the head. Well, the Cardinals just can't get ahead right now. You spot, you got to go Fourth for and five. it. Down 28-3. Yeah. They're on the 33-yard line. And this is the go zone right here. Fourth and manageable. Playbook should be wide open. See back-to-back -back plays. Brent Venables dial up some pressure. See if he elects to try to heat up. Pull the pass. Seven to sixteen on fourth downs this year. And he's going to be swallowed up and sacked. Swarmed the back of the 39. Kendall Joseph was the first Tiger to arrive. This will make you think about things if you're the Tigers and your great play. And uh, Coach Sweeney talked about the meditative powers they've acquired lately. Do I know how it works? Yeah, we do it every Thursday. We sit in here and go, um, you know, and everybody in the room, we're supposed to have our eyes closed and, and our hands on our, our 
And you feel your feet into the floor and your body, your weight into the seat. So it's like three minutes, you know, and then you come back and you go, of course, Darnell's asleep in the back. And, and you just kind of, you kind of come up and you go, kind of good, you know, it's kind of nice. And, and that pass is picked off. So that'll give Coach Sweeney something to meditate on in his next session. The Cardinals come up with a pick on that pass by Lawrence Anthony Johnson at the other end of that Lawrence pass was a play action pass they try to hit T Higgins down the field on a deep post overthrown by Trevor Lawrence an excellent interception by the safety that's only his third pick of the season Anthony Johnson sorry the cornerback Continue to get depth from his coverage. Nobody was on his side of the field, so nice play for Louisville getting the ball back. They get a little momentum going here. Jawan pass upfield and incomplete at the 42-yard line, intended for 2-2 Atwell. Back to Coach Sweeney. The Clemson team every Thursday does a group meditation, uh, part of their sports psychology approach, and it's something that's really bared a lot of fruit for them. Milt Louder is their performance psychologist. And Amari Rogers in particular, one of their leading receivers, has benefited from the Headspace app, which they use to lead the way in their meditation. A whistle and a flag. Dusty, did you do any meditation before games, after games, to get to sleep at night when you played? Med Meditation? <laughs> Defense number nine. nine. Five yard penalty. Stand up. I, I said meditation, not medication. You, you meditation. Mean, you mean like put on some some loud heavy metal music before the game? You mean <laughs> meditate like that? <laughs> no, I don't know. Nothing there wasn't, like that. Wasn't a whole lot of meditation. No, you didn't light any candles. No, no candle lighting, no meditation. That was more like Dabo Sweeney there. I thought it was funny though. <laughs> you know, he said while they meditate, Coach Brent Venables. He's back there drawing up plays. Yeah, he can't. He can't turn it off. No, man, that's his way of meditating. Now he draws up yeah. defensive plays. He's look at Rogers, who after he fumbled the punt return, started his meditation. That pass incomplete. Rogers had a fumble that led to a touchdown for the opposition, then decided to learn how to focus and center his thoughts in his mind, and he's really benefited from the meditation sessions and does it frequently as for coach Venables he doesn't look like uh, he does much of it he he is high strong 24 7 that's the chicken dance right there. <laughs> third and five backside heat and pass is going to take off those Clemson defenders are equally as fast though Denzel Johnson with a tackle, a four-yard gain. Really good tackle out there in open space by Johnson on the perimeter. Looked like Jawan Pass was going to be able to pick up that first down. Excellent job closing to the football. See the speed. Gets him to the ground immediately. Can assure you, the intense defensive coordinator, he's not happy because he wasn't happy that the blitz came and they allowed Puma Pass to break the pocket and almost pick up that first down. But he was happy that Johnson was able to get him down before the first down. Rodgers on the punt return at the 40. He avoids the fair catch and is brought down right there on the 38-yard punt. Well, it's not just week 10 of the college football season. It's Statement Saturday. That's right, Statement Saturday. A doubleheader for your college football. Implications on the line. Number 14, Penn State. Big House taking on Michigan, then Notre Dame Northwestern. Everything on the ESPN app, so catch the game wherever you can. Nice job by the defense after a sudden change, quick turnover. They get the quick three and out, get their offensive ball back. We'll see how Trevor Lawrence responds after the early interception. First down and 10 completes this one on the edge. Gain of about four on the play. That's Amari Rogers. Get ready to learn something new with today's Aflac Game Facts. Clemson's been ranked in the college football playoff top four every week since 
The first release in 2015, 19 straight longest streak of the playoff era. Only Alabama has been ranked in the top four more times overall. I have a sneaky feeling that uh, these guys are on a collision course again. That's Rodgers. And what about the consistency of the program that Dabo Sweeney has built here? It's exceptional. I mean, it's, it's really incredible. When you look year after year after year, veteran players, three straight college football playoff appearances as well as ACC championships, and it kind of feels like you're just getting started, Jonesy. Yeah. He's got it rolling. Lawrence pulls it out. And has a spirited run down to the 43. There's a look at the excellence that we alluded to a moment ago. Coach Sweeney said that when I first got my first head coaching job, he said, I promised myself that I wanted to win, but win a certain way. ETN. Pushed out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. And when you get players and recruit players and sign players like ETN, it makes winning a little less difficult. 32 yards on that sprint. That's a six 100-yard rushing game of the season. See the speed on the perimeter by Travis ETN. Man, when he sees it, great burst. goes again breaking a couple of tackles inside the five second and goal We're going fast here that Louisville defense on its heels ETN brought down at about the three yard line third and goal going back to what you mentioned a second ago something really stood out to me when Dabo Sweeney said I'd rather lose the right way than win the wrong way. He runs his program the right way, and man, they just continue to win at a ridiculous clip. They are their own opponent. Third down and two. Uh, rather casually now walks over to the sideline take a look at the big play that got them down here nice blocking on the right side you'll see the tight end Cannon Smith right here he's going to get a good block as well as 73 watch the blocking on the outside 73 Ankrum work a little combo block and then a huge huge hole for ETN to see and the speed the afterburners as he hits the sidelines good physical blocking on the edge nice combo with the right tackle and the tight end and that's all Travis Etienne needs a little bit of sliver of daylight well at the end of the quarter we'll get you to the studio for the Capital One halftime report as in the studio chopping it up and breaking out a very busy day statement Saturday here in college football as you look at Etienne there on the sidelines uh, we asked the coaches uh, coach Jeff Scott told us when we saw them the first time around at Georgia Tech, said we didn't know that ETN was going to be this good. He is the school career leader in yards per carry at 7.8. That's a gaudy number. And the Louisiana native looking forward to making big news. There's a look at their co-offensive coordinator. Third down and two. Good chance he gets it again here. Lawrence sprints out. Touchdown, Rogers. So many options offensively for Clemson. I like utilize the athleticism of the quarterback. Roll the pocket, little bootleg. Sprints out to his left. He throws so well moving to his left. And a wide open Amari Rogers in the flats. They had that stack, that bunch on the left side. Amari Rogers comes out clean, wide open. Excellent play call for an easy touchdown. That's his fourth touchdown seat of the season. Mari Rogers, the son of Tennessee national champion T. Hill. Well, so many great things to see here at Clemson, and we were talking about it a few weeks ago, too. 
Oh, you ever run down the hill? Have you run down the hill at Death Valley yet? No. Done a game there? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, if we get there this year, you're running down the hill with me. Well, I've done a game there. I just haven't run down the hill. Got to run down the hill. I'm going to beat you. I know that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, Mark Jones got no chance today. No chance. Well, let's go. Where you at, Jonesy? You jumped me on the start. Where you at, Jonesy? You jumped me on the start. He's <laughs> <laughs> an old guy. Hey, you know what? For an old man. Fall. That's a win. Hey, that's that's pretty legit right there. We've the, now yeah. done it. We've done the walk. Yeah. Or the run. That yeah. was fun. It's steeper than it I thought steep. it was. Yes, it is. Absolutely. I've done it before. I don't remember it being that steep. It's amazing more guys don't fall coming down. It should be more of a trot down the hill <laughs> than a sprint. Jonesy, Dusty absolutely crushed you, but you know more mass equals more acceleration. True, so. true. <laughs> Come on, true. Molly, what are you trying to say? He had a, he had a built-in advantage there, Molly. I'm glad you're wise enough and intelligent enough Dusty, to, you're to recognize lineman. that. Thank Come you. Come on, I love you, but you know. <laughs> Smart observation from the two. Oh. Yeah, there's something. Man, Dabo called his... Uh, First round NFL pick, 99. <laughs> he must be hot. That's Hassan Hall on the kickoff return. So with a 32-point lead underway here in the third quarter, Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. You heard from Molly. What do you make of Dabo uh, looking at half empty instead of half full I right love now. it, man. You know what? Stay on your guys. Hold them accountable. Demand more. A pursuit of excellence. Okay. That's what they're all about here at Clemson. We said it from the very top. This isn't about Louisville today. It's about them getting better, fine-tuning, making that championship phase come to fruition and peaking at the right time as we trend closer and closer to the end of the season. One pass complete out to the edge. And a nice gain out to the 30 to Seth Duncan picks up four. You know what is Dabo Sweeney to pat these guys on the back yeah. for? You know what I mean? Like, these yeah. guys, they, they, don't, they don't need that right now. They need to be able to lock in, stay focused, and get the absolute best out of his players. And I love I love that he's that demanding. And he is, he is not going to stop until he gets exactly what he wants from his football team. Nothing wrong with demanding excellence when you've got a team as talented as this one. He expects excellence from Burrow. Lawrence Wilkins up front in pursuit of pass and pass escapes well and is brought down at the first down marker Farrell making the tackle on the play as we take a look at our back life game summary right now some of the pertinent points in the ball game Clemson started off first five plays that put 14 on the board with Travis Etienne he had some big runs how about that 15.1 yards Per rush so far, and you see on the flip side, Louisville wanted to try to establish a line of scrimmage, wanted to run the football, only 2.2 yards a clip. Our Pacific Life game summary. Pressure coming, and man, that play blown up at the 30 by Christian Wilkins. Kendall Joseph right there as well. Yeah, it's Christian Wilkins, it's Kendall Joseph. We're going to see pressure coming from the linebacker spot, both backers, and then Christian Wilkins. Watch these guys come up, and then Christian Wilkins able to beat his man. Penetration, getting up the field, playing the other side of the football, coming into this game. 80 tackles for loss, second most in all of college football. That, there's seven for this afternoon. Second and long. bootleg action. Juwan Pass looking for a receiver. Surveys nobody open downfield and he's tackled at the 33 yard line by Wallace. You know we were talking about Christian Wilkins a moment ago and Brent Venables the defensive coordinator known to really ratchet up the heat and turn up the intensity and in meeting so Venables was telling us a story about how he'll really start railing on his guys getting into his players a little bit and then midway through it Wilkins will come up and pinch him on the butt yeah. to break the tension. <laughs> he has fun, man. He locks in. He's focused. He's a great football player. I just, I like the, the passion that he plays with and really the effort he gives down in and down out for this football team. A great uh, balance of work and play on this Clemson squad right now. Doing work against Louisville. And there's the guy we just talked about. The ball came out. But it's ruled down. Wilkins there to sack the quarterback, Jawan Pass. 
Well, he get to pinch his defensive coordinator on the butt all he wants after a play like that. Parker. When, when you've got Christian Wilkins, you've got Cleveland Furl, two first-round picks, and they're working on the same side. Just so tough to deal with. This Louisville offensive line, they can't handle them. Continued pressure throughout the course of this game by that defensive line of Clemson. Nobody's been better today than 42 Christian Wilkins. Mason King with the punt. Rodgers back there calling for the fair catch at about the 42-yard line. The Clemson Tigers will have great starting field position after that 33-yard punt. Lawrence at the wheel. Goal and extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. On a beautiful Saturday afternoon, the first one in the month of November. Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. Molly McGrath down in the field. Clemson leading 35-3. First and 10 from the 42. Lawrence surveys, fires, and complete to Hunter Lawrence. Pardon me, Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro, he of the game-winning touchdown catch. Excellent hands. Quality route runner. Knows exactly where to go. The timing here is impeccable. As soon as... As soon as he gets out of his break, that ball is right there on time and on target. The 43. And it off to ETN, untouched. Got a block. And pushed out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Right down by number one. Ankrum sprung him loose on that 41-yard gallop. We've seen time and time again another explosive run by Travis Etienne, the right side of the offensive line. Excellent job by the right tackle, getting it hooked, and then 84, Cannon Smith pushes his guy out of the screen. Huge hole off the right side. And Travis Etienne with the burst in the big game. Piling up the yards, approaching 200. Lawrence incomplete, intended for Hunter Renfro. Good coverage that time by Chandler Jones. It'll be third second and goal pardon me and in comes the jumbo package led by Christian Wilkins they'll hand it off or they have a possibility to hand it off to him here well, look at this fullback Dexter Lawrence having been a 350 it'll be interesting Molly and I watched Christian Wilkins catch passes for I don't know 20 30 minutes maybe a play action could they dare throw him the football in the backfield this is where it gets interesting Wilkins, they give it to the fullback. Touchdown, Lawrence, Dexter Lawrence. Move over, Refrigerator Perry. There's a bigger guy getting into the end zone for Clemson. This is a mountain of a man, 6'4", 350 plus. Another future first round pick. Last week it was Christian Wilkins that scores. This time they give it to the fullback. Nothing better than seeing the big uglies up front <laughs> finding a way to get into the end zone. Having fun, man. That's no. what it's about. That's the culture they created. Brent Venables talked last week about it. The fun, how much he loves seeing those guys get to do that. Total buy-in mm -hmm. from the squad. No fun if the homies can't have him. <laughs> Dexter Lawrence. 6'4". 350 pounds. That's generous, my man. Yeah. Might be more than that. <laughs> I tell you, those those football pants are full, folks. Get out the way. <laughs> Get out the tracks when the trades coming through. The booth all day. <laughs> nah. And they'll start first and ten from the 25-yard line. But Dexter Lawrence with the touchdown run a moment ago. And this was the counter move by Louisville, bringing in one of their larger defensive linemen, Dumerville Jean. Yes. Dumerville Jean, 6'5, 378. Says, You got a big guy. We got a bigger guy. <laughs> we don't take Dexter Lawrence, though, in that matchup. Yeah. Was Dexter Lawrence, I was down by the end zone with him. He ain't fat. He's like 355, and he's just a big wow. man. First down and 10. Let's see if Louisville can get something going here. Jawan pass. Picked off. Coming back the other way. Tanner Muse. And inside the 10-yard line. Yeah. 
second pick of the day for Clemson. Well, Jawan Pass, I don't think he ever saw the safety muse as he steps right in front of the pass, trying to find Jordan Davis's tight end over the middle. And Tanner Muse reads the quarterback's eyes the whole way. Look at him undercut the route. Mm. Outstanding job by the junior safety and getting his offense the ball inside the 10-yard line. Feaster in at tailback. Lawrence out of the shotgun on first and 10. They fake the jet sweep and hand it off to Feaster. And Feaster already has a touchdown run from earlier today. Taking the football away. It's a big part of what this Clemson defense does. Two today, one of them for a touchdown. The other setting up Clemson with the ball inside the 10. Brent Venables, he demands a lot of his defense, wants his guys to play fast, know where to be. Good things happen, as we just saw. Easter again inside the five, down to the two-yard line. I wonder if we're going to see Wilkins and Lawrence again here. Third and goal. Does the, the jumbo package come in or not? That'd be like uh, you and Tommy Harris lining up in the backfield, right? What could have right? been? <laughs> Why are you saying stuff like that, man? Could have been you and Tommy Harris, man. Mark Mangino, Chuck Long, Kevin Wilson never gave Tommy and I a chance in the backfield. Third and goal. Room service, Feaster. Touchdown, Clemson. And the beat goes on. Cue the DJ in the band. Well, you know the saying, feast or famine. It's been a feast today for this Clemson Tiger football team as they take a big lead here midway through the third quarter. Offensive line opposing their will in the interior of that offensive line. Good push and an easy walk-in touchdown for Tavian Feaster. Just under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Clemson leading 49 to three. Feaster with his second touchdown of the day. They have had their way running, passing. One to Death Valley Memorial Stadium, the original Death Valley, even though I know there's a big game at the other Death Valley tonight between number one Alabama, number three LSU. But number two taking care of business right now, Clemson. From the one. Hassan Hall makes it out to about the 20 yard line. You know, you had to expect that there would be some sort of drop off after Lamar Jackson went to the NFL. It's kind of like the Cavs losing LeBron James when the focal point and the heartbeat of everything you do and all of your winning is gone. It's a different ballgame. It is. You know, what I thought was so interesting is you know about what he what Lamar Jackson brought to the field and the athleticism, the talent, but the leadership is what they've really missed, right? His ability to get the most out of other players. They haven't found anybody to step up and, and take on that role for this Louisville football team. So you're missing the leadership of Lamar Jackson and obviously one of the most dynamic playmakers we've seen in college football in quite some time. It's all on the run. And I, and I think for Lamar Jackson, I think that he really masked you know, some of the deficiencies that Louisville had, right? Because whenever you get so enamored with him and he can make wrongs right, but now that he's not there, those deficiencies, man, they really rear their ugly head as we've seen this season. On second down, pass completes the pass. Near the first down marker out to Des Fitzpatrick. Molly, it's uh, a different side of the story, though, when you look at uh, Clemson's. Team. Yeah, that's right, Mark. In contrast, Clemson is chock full of leaders. Dabo Sweeney even gave the example of the Golden State Warriors and said, when you watch them play, do you think they care who they're playing? No, they compete among themselves. Steph Curry will have a big night. Then it's Clay Thompson. Then it's Ke Kevin Durant. Those guys compete among their teammates. They push each other. You can tell they're having fun because they're focused on themselves. So that's how Clemson is able to keep this thing going and Louisville struggling mightily because they're not competing and they don't have that leader to kind of show them the way. Mm. Yeah, good point, Molly. On third and short, 
Not sure that they're going to make it. The flag down to the players. Colin Wilson is brought down a little bit short. In the vicinity of a hold. I'm going to take him back. Good tackle in the open field there by Shaq Smith, linebacker. Abo Sweeney says push him back. Bobby Petrino's team 2-6 and six coming in 0-5 and five in conference play. They have yet to win a conference game coming off of a very big loss last week against Wake Forest. Now third and long, and you've got a well-rested defensive line coming in. Checking in just now, you got Dexter Lawrence, Cleveland Furl, as well as on the outside, Austin Bryant. So Louisville's offensive line, they better be ready to go because Clemson, they're going to be coming after the passer on this one. Pass got rid of it in time on the quick game and completes it to Seth Dawkins, who made the reception, but about four yards short of the first down, so they'll come in and punt. Cleveland Farrell with the pressure on pass. I like this inside move by Cleveland Farrell. Watch him off the right side. He's going to be right here. He does an excellent job getting flat down the line of scrimmage. He's going to work a text game. Dexter Lawrence gets up the field. Cleveland Farrell is a wrapper and a clean avenue to the quarterback. Amari Rogers hit immediately drilled at the 37-yard line and a flag down. The hit on the play made by Marion Character. 36-yard punt. Second big hit we've seen on a punt return. That's the first time Louisville's really got excited about something today. The officials punt, pardon me, microphone not working, obviously, and looking to see if it's targeting. Take a look at the replay. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no yep. doubt. There's 100% yeah. target. That is the one that they show us in our demo films. Yeah, it's not one to dance I mean, over. No. Crown of the helmet. The officials reviewing it right now. The ruling on the field is targeting with Clemson leading by 46. We'll be back after this. One more look at that last targeting penalty that was called against character a moment ago. Well, Amari Rogers okay. Yeah, he knew right away and character is done. It's a dangerous he, play, man. Yeah, the ruling on the field confirmed by the video replay officials and Chase Bryce is in a quarterback now in place of Trevor Lawrence. Bryce got a lot of help back there. This is Adam Choice still on his feet, refusing to go down. Choice showing tremendous effort. Unrelenting down to the 17-yard line. That's a great run by Adam Choice, but I gotta tell you, I'm gonna start questioning the effort and the want to of this Louisville defense. I mean, come on. Really? I mean, I'm not gonna try to get him to the ground. I don't, bad tackling, I think it's bad effort. It's bad defense. That's that's not what you want to see if you're the defensive coordinator, Brian Van Gorder. Feaster now in a tailback. A pass incomplete by Chase Bryce. Hey, let's talk about Chase Bryce, the guy in a quarterback right now in place of Trevor Lawrence. From Grayson, Georgia, 6'2 freshman. 220 pounds. Now keep in mind, when Bryant left the program, he became the guy. And in the game the following week against Syracuse here at home, he had to come in and play a vital role in winning that game as Clemson had to come from behind to get the victory. Hand off here to the edge. This is Feaster. Collared out of bounds at about the two. And it's first and goal. Excellent job blocking on the edge. Chandler Reeves really helped spring that run on the perimeter. First and goal at the one. Trevor Lawrence out. Chase Bryce has come in. Trevor Lawrence with a 
productive day. Did have the one interception on the deep shot that he took. Pretty efficient day so far. But Jonesy, you're exactly right with Chase Bryce. I mean, a vital role. He yep. served against Syracuse when Lawrence went down. He stepped in, made some tough, gritty plays down the stretch to keep the undefeated season alive. Yeah. And now he's really picked it up as the true backup quarterback. First and goal. Touchdown, Feaster. There's a flag down on the field, though, so let's hold on a minute. And think about it. Before that game, Chase Bryce had been the third-string quarterback. Yeah. They're going to call this one against the offense, so it'll come back. He wasn't, yep. he wasn't yep. really getting, you know, reps. Practice reps. Yep. Now that he's the true backup, getting much more reps in practice. And if something were to happen to Trevor Lawrence moving forward, Chase Bryce had to step in. He's clearly already shown he can do that. But I think it's fair to say he could do that in a more efficient way and have a better understanding of this offense moving forward. Yeah, he had, Dusty, a 13-play or led a 13-play 94-yard drive with Lawrence out because of the injury that game. And they went on to win it. He had a big fourth down play against Syracuse in the fourth quarter. Here he is. Fakes the toss. Man, he's got some moxie and savvy. Brought down at about the one-yard line. Chase Bryce brought down by C.J. Avery. You know, they have since talked to Trevor Lawrence about learning how to get down a little better. Yeah. When he took that hit in that Syracuse game, which had him miss the rest of the contest. It's not high school anymore. You're not going <laughs> to run over linebackers and safeties at this level. Be smart, take care of your body, and get down whenever you have the opportunity. He's been doing a good job of it today, Dusty, because his uniform is clean and have to go to the laundry with that one after second and goal coming up. We have a player shaken up on the field. Well, our week nine Monday night football matchup is a crucial one between three and four teams coming off of the bye in the big D. Titans Cowboys 815 Eastern 515 Pacific on ESPN simulcast cast on ESPN 2 in Spanish available on the app so you can watch it anywhere. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at six. Mari Cooper going to make his debut for those Cowboys. Yeah, big Good deal. Receiver. I didn't like the trade, though, for the Cowboys. First round pick I thought was too much, too to much. Give up for Mari Cooper. Hey, I want to go Still back. a big playmaker. That's Jacopo being taken off the field for Louisville. We go back to what you were talking about with the decision to make Trevor Lawrence the starter. I thought it was big time of Dabo Sweeney to let Kelly Bryant know before the four games and allow him the opportunity if he wanted to transfer so he could go elsewhere and get a full year of eligibility as a starter somewhere, if even if it wasn't here at Clemson. I think that's big time and something not many coaches around the country would do for their player. Second goal. On the throwback, it's the offensive lineman Mitch Hyatt who earlier today set a record for most snaps ever played at Clemson. Big fellow was looking to take it in and house it, but he got tackled. What a player Mitch Hyde has been. I mean, four-year starter, 51st game to start. They try to get him in the end zone. Watch him right here. He's just going to run a little route out here. It's going to be a throwback. He caught the ball. Would have been so cool to see him get in the end zone. His guys are out there trying to block for him. <laughs> Pass it to the end zone. That's a touchdown. That's what it looks like. Travian Thompson with the catch. We saw a similar play earlier from Trevor Lawrence, right? They rolled it to the left. Now they're going to roll Chase Bryce to his right. Nice throw on the move as he finds a wide open Travion Thompson in the end zone. Good efficient drive there led by the redshirt freshman Chase Bryce. Extra point good, and it's 56 to 3. Would have been cool if Mitch Hyatt was able to get in the end zone. I just like the fact they threw him the football. What a day that is. There, there's still time. More snaps played than anybody in the history of Clemson University. To take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings are brought to you by Allstate. Big one tonight, Alabama LSU at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Watching that on the ESPN app as we make our ways to our 
homes and destinations. A lot of big ones. How about Michigan Penn State? This would be a good game. Oh, Michigan defense. Hold on a second. Hold, the, hold on, buddy. What you got? Hold on. Who do you like tonight? I'm not going to let Who? you off that easy. Which one? Alabama LSU. Come on, man. What I, I told you what I'd say earlier. There's only, only one, one team, team I think that can play with Alabama. It's right here on this field. It's Clemson Tigers. I actually think Alabama goes into that Death Valley. They get a convincing victory tonight. What do you I, think about that? I like the Tigers quarterback play this year. I think it's going to be a better game than most people think. And you better pick up the phone tonight when you look at the caller ID if I call you. Okay? Devin White, <laughs> outstanding linebacker for LSU. I thought it was a bad targeting call from a week ago. Right. He's out the first half. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you this, man. They better show up and play early. Because if not, that game could get out of control. I'm just saying, LSU is not built to come back. You better pick up your feet. <laughs> It'll be first and 10 from the 25 as we go back to the studio. And now let's take a look at a performance above brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Buckeyes get in a fight at a Nebraska. However, J.K. Dobbins up the middle gives Ohio State the 23-21 lead under five to play in the third quarter. Coming up 345 on ESPN. Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines take it on Penn State. Guys, back to you. But, uh, Big game there with Michigan on the fringes of the college football playoff at number five. First and ten for Jawan Pass. Been a tough day for him and his teammates. Gonna run it into the boundary. And Colin Wilson takes it out to the 30. Hey, let's go back to the college football playoff standings what, what did you make of it was it pretty much as you expected it would be it was it was, it was the exact top 10 that I had uh, except I had Notre Dame L LSU okay based on just based on the, the better why that they're undefeated okay. uh, based on the fact that they got that win against Michigan who's number five okay. like based on the fact that since Ian book has taken over that offense is much better good reasons uh, uh, uh. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that Got away from two different defenders, but not the third one. And he's sacked by Chad Smith. Who's was on coming up. It was all set up by 67 Albert Huggins. Remember I told you earlier there's backups that might be able to find their way on NFL rosters. Albert Huggins is one of those guys. Pass rushing right here. He's just going to work inside. Be able to get himself a nice rush. Goes inside. See how he pinned his hands on that center's back. Ricocheted him back to the quarterback. I know he didn't get him down, but it disrupted the entire play and allowed the rest of the Clemson defense to get on to walk past the quarterback who's been on his back time and time again this afternoon. First in yards per carry defense, that defense. The fifth sack of the afternoon. Pass incompleted the 33-yard line. Intended for Devontae Pete. Good coverage by Goodrich. And time once again to introduce you to Mason King, the punter for the Louisville Cardinals. Right, third and long situation again. It's just catastrophic for this offense. And look who's back to getting this punt for the Tigers. It's the coach's son, Sweeney, back there. We got a time out in the field, so he'll have to wait a little bit. That one never told us how close Mason Sweeney came to beating him in, uh, or Will Sweeney came in to beating him in, uh, in, in horse or one on one. But he made it sound like he just dominated his kids, except for the one. Well, you dominate your kids and stuff, I right? Did, I did it for as long as I could. And then they got you, huh? <laughs> was that, now, was it Father Todd that caught up with you, or is it your kids just got too skilled? It was when my son got a little too good. Okay. And uh, uh, he accidentally elbowed me in the mouth, and I bloodied my mouth, and I knew it was time to stop. What about your daughters? Your daughters are ballers, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Sophia Jones, I don't, I don't mess with her anymore. She's really good, and so is Glory. So, I, yeah, I'm out, of the, I'm out of the challenge game. I gave up the belt. I don't let my kids beat me in checkers, man. I don't care what it is. Hey, sometimes you don't have a choice. Hey, <laughs> Candyland, right? I mean, you name it, I'm trying to beat them. Uh, I understand where Coach Sweeney's coming from. Will Sweeney going to get a chance here?
Fair catch called by Sweeney. I could have swore he put his hand up and called for the fair catch. He got hit anyway, and that's going to be a flag. Maurice Berkeley with the hit. Sweeney hung on to the ball, too. I was going to say, Dad's going to like the fact that he held on to the football. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 36, 15 yard penalty, first down. High impact collisions and penalties. Putt returns today. Calls for the fair catch clearly. That's just yeah. That's just not being a smart football player. Pops is like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Got the call. Yep. Two fifteen to go. Playing receiver now. He lines up as a receiver. It's been for the Cardinals. They can't get out of their own way today. Even when they win, they seem to lose. Looked like the fumble came on the exchange between Chase Bryce and, and the running back in the backfield initially. Let's take a look at this again. Yeah, that was confusion between quarterback and running back. He had a redshirt freshman quarterback and a true freshman running back. Bryce thought he gave it. Dixon thought he was keeping it. Ball's on the ground. They wind up with it. Little receiver screen here. Complete to Dustin Ross, the true freshman. I'll tell you what, you're looking at one of the best athletes to come out of the state of Alabama last year. Not just on the football field, but on the basketball court as well. And he is going to be a very special receiver before his time is done here at Clemson. <laughs> Between the legs? Man, he's got some hops. When in time to pass for Bryce. Taking a shot. Caught. Touchdown, Tigers. Ross. That's a slam dunk. Well thrown ball by Chase Bryce. Justin Ross had a step on the defender. You saw him use his left arm to create a little bit of separation. Catches the back end of the football as he strolls into the end zone. Dynamic playmaker, just a true freshman. He'll be an explosive electric player here for Clemson for several years to come. And Dabo Sweeney, as, as veteran as this team is, with some of the, the, the older leaders they have, well, they've been mentors to what Dabo Sweeney has said might be his most talented freshman class he's ever had. And that's a bold statement, partner. Yep. Justin Ross, number one in Ryan High School player in the state of Alabama last year. The fact that they were able to get him away from Nick Saban in the Crimson Tide says a lot about the gravity and the pull and the magnitude of what Sweeney has done here at Clemson. Not very often is the top player in the state of Alabama get out of the state. <laughs> Whether it be at Auburn or clearly in Tuscaloosa at Alabama, it's a huge get for this program. That's a career-long reception, 60 yards for Justin Ross. I just want to know that recruiting story. Well, we know a lot about the recruiting story, but I'm wondering if Dabble came in in the helicopter for him. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's more than just a private jet. Might have got him on the court. Hey, that's a, yeah, yeah. Just say, come with me. I got him on the court. Phoenix City, Alabama. Six foot four. And more bounce to the ounce. Sean Hall on the kickoff return. Found a little alley. Oh! Hassan Hall! Gonna take it back. Touchdown cards. 93 yards. Speaking of true freshman with speed, Hassan Hall. They've been waiting to get him going for quite some time this week. Bobby Petrino said in his press conference and to us, they need to block up these kick returns because Hassan Hall has big play capability. And it's well blocked up front. He had a crease. He hit the Jets. 
and he takes it to the house. Look at the blocking up front. Big alley. Hassan Hall sees it, makes the kicker miss, and then it's a dash to the end zone, and no one's going to catch Hassan Hall. Mm. Well, the extra point is partially blocked by Christian Wilkins. Who else? The guy's ubiquity is so impactful on offense, on defense, special teams. Nice moment for the Louisville Cardinals. A second ago, 93 yard kickoff return by Hassan Hall. That's the longest play this season for Bobby Petrino's team. And a little bit of light shed on their afternoon on that play. Told us they were looking for any positive signs to build off yeah. of. And this year one after Lamar Jackson, their Heisman Trophy winner. Kendrick on the return. The U.S. Navy when Justin was little. He was two years old during her first deployment with the Navy. So credit to you and salute to you, Miss Franklin, for serving our country and protecting our freedoms and rights both domestically and abroad. Thank you, Miss Franklin. Yes. Very much appreciate your service. And your son is a special player. Justin Ross with that great catch for the touchdown a moment ago. Averaging over 21 yards a catch. Mm. Big play capability at any moment. Hey, I'll tell you, Dabo ain't playing him on one in one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> he's not, not keeping the belt if he's playing against Justin Ross, that's for sure. 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. That pass complete to DeAndre Overton. They've got a bevy, a group of receivers. Yep. Partner that are 6'4, 6'4, 6'4. Overton 6'4, Ross 6'4, Higgins 6'4. So, beautiful day here on campus at Clemson University. An Evelyn Sky spattering down in the Christian field. And there they go again. Dixon making tracks. Tiger Paws touchdown. That's their 10th touchdown of the day. And we've got a quarter to play. Fifty five yards on that one for Dixon. Hit me in the DM I guess because this football game is done. They're on their phones because what's happening on the field is pretty much decided was excellent blocking off the left side of the offensive line. 79's gonna get some. We're gonna see the fullback lead up. Set that edge, big hole in the middle. And then it's just off to the races. Dixon, the true freshman, <laughs> and a scary, scary Clemson Tiger football team. Yeah, frightening. 70 to 9. Last week they handed Florida State their worst defeat ever. And Louisville might be suffering the same fate here this afternoon. Partner, since halftime of that Syracuse game, they've just been rolling people. I mean, Wake Forest 63-3, NC State 41-7, Florida State 59-10, 79 here today. And this Clemson football team, since they've inserted Trevor Lawrence, the defense is locked in, the offense is clicking in all cylinders, and man, they are peaking at the right time, just as Dabo Swing would like. You see if they kick it to Hassan Hall, who took the last one back for a touchdown. Instead, it'll go out the back of the end zone as we go back to the studio with Matt. Guys, thanks. Syracuse ranked for the first time since 2001. They get 26 yards here from Eric Dungy for the touchdown. Right now, Orange up in this one, 35-24. Coming up next, 3.30 Eastern, ABC. James Blackman and Florida State on the road at NC State. Perhaps a little more competitive than what you guys got going on out there in Death Valley. 
Mm. All right, Matt, Malik Cunningham now in at quarterback in place of Jawan Pass. Bouncing the outside is Hassan Hall. And Hall making a little bit of lemonade out of lemons on that play. There was nothing inside. It was an inside handoff. Zone play. Stopped right at the point of contact with the line of scrimmage. And it's the playmaker making a play. Bounce it back outside, uses his speed to get to the edge. And nice pickup. Native of Atlanta, Georgia, a freshman. Got some speed, man. We've seen that on this play here in the second half. And by the way, Malik Cunningham, much more of a running quarterback. See if they utilize some of his skills. He started a couple of games this year. That time pushed out of bounds at about the 47-yard line by Nolan Turner. Malik Cunningham is a 6'1 freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. Sparked the team in the game against Western Kentucky. Started against Virginia. But then they went back to Juwan Pass. And what has been life after Lamar Jackson for Bobby Petrino, the head coach. A rough year for this Louisville football team. Bobby Petrino, as you mentioned, Puma Pass has had his ups and his downs. A nice spin move into some bad intentions, though, from Chris Register. Bobby Petrino on the left. And, you know, he talked to us yesterday, and they're just trying to keep these kids positive on the football team. You know, trying to explain to them that, you know, this is football similar to life, right? That you got to overcome obstacles. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be tough times. What do you do in those moments? What do you do next? How do you get over that hump? By Petrino and this team trying to figure that out. Clemson coming with a blitz. Cunningham lets it fly. And it's caught by Tutu Atwell. Atwell all the way down to the 11-yard line. The freshman out of Miami, Florida. Talented freshman. He's small, he's shifty. Watch the focus and the concentration on the football. Excellent job getting his hand in there. The defender, Jalen Williams, a linebacker. Good coverage, but it's much better concentration and focus on the football by Tutu Atwell. Big-time catch by the freshman. First down and 10. Deep in Clemson territory. He's going to take off. Cunningham doesn't get anywhere. Tutu Atwell is from Northwestern High School in Dade County, Miami, Florida. State champion, state player of the year in Class 7A football, one of the top divisions in the state. And he was the subject of the documentary made by LeBron James, amongst others. He was the executive producer. Liberty City Warriors, that is the youth football team that rapper Luke Campbell started and has sent tons of players more than any other program in the country into the NFL. On the run into the boundary, Cunningham cuts it up. Did he step out of bounds? Number three, number three, Touchdown. Touchdown. Malik Cunningham cut it up at the last second, went north-south and got in to score. This is the dimension he brings to this offense. Dynamic playmaker. That was an excellent block by 85. Jordan Davis, the key block right there, takes the defender out of bounds. And an excellent cut on the sidelines by Malik Cunningham. After missing the previous extra point. Celebrate the small victories like that last touchdown drive. A great point, Molly. And Kendrick here on the kickoff return for the Clemson Tigers. Brought down at the 25. Let's go back to Matt Berry in the studio. Guys, thank you. Now let's take a look at today's moment of relief brought to you by Vicks Vapo Cool. A little bit of relief for Buckeyes fans. Paris Campbell, nine-yard touchdown, getting some separation from Nebraska, start of the fourth quarter. Coming up at 345 Eastern on ESPN, Trace McSorley and Penn State, the big win last week at home against Iowa. But different story today at Michigan. Guys, back to you. Penn State, Michigan. Who do you like in that game? Michigan. Okay. A defense is salty. Mm -hmm. This is the best defensive line in the country. One of the best defenses. I think Michigan has the best defense wow. in college football. Okay. 70 to 16. 
Tigers going deep into their running back rotation. This is Wrencher. You know, during the last four games, this team is really starting to peak and get into form and find its rhythm, both on offense and on defense. They've outscored their opponents offensively 233 to 36. And when Coach Dabo Sweeney says, this is championship time, we're in our championship phase, he has good reason to believe that his team is going to respond because they're trending in the right direction right now. Absolutely they are. Playing phenomenal football. And what I like is that he's not satisfied. He wants more. He's going to continue to push. He's not going to allow these guys to be complacent. He's going to hold them accountable. He wants it to be perfect because you know it, partner. It's going to have to continue to get better as they're working to get closer and closer for what we know should be another matchup yep. with them in Alabama. From the 35. To the backfield complete and another first down out near midfield the Tigers continue to stack up the yards that's JC Chalk there's a look at the chances to make the college football playoff tell you what I'd take 93 percent any day yeah Clemson and I think it's as much about the conference as well as them they're a fantastic football team but I also think that the the scores we've seen the last few weeks are a little bit indicative that the ACC is down this year Clemson should roll I expect Alabama's going to do the same. Well, three teams from the SEC with three of the four highest percentages to make it. See, I think only one SEC school gets in this year. Really? Yeah. I only wow. think one. Yeah. Um, I think LSU's going to lose today, be their second loss. That's going to put them out. Okay. Georgia's already got an L. I think if Georgia first loss beat Kentucky, but say they do, they're going to match Alabama in the SEC championship. I don't think they're able to to beat them or give them the game that they did last year in the national championship. So I, I think it's just one this year from the SEC. Toss to the wide side of the boundary. Wide side of the field. Great move by Dixon. Oh, Dixon inside the 10. First and goal, Tigers. I mean, he hit him with the sauce and put the brakes on and kept going. True freshman Lynn J. Dixon going to toss it. Out to the open space. Watch the footwork. Ooh. Shake him down in the open space. And then you see the afterburners. Mm. The acceleration to run, run away from defenders. Tough to bring down. Big second half for the true freshman. Yeah, 97 yards total on just three rushes. Christian Bale Sweeney on the jet sweep. Touchdown! Making Dad proud. Dad smiling, that joy's all over his face. Happiness, fun, everyone likes it. Got to be a special moment for Dabo Sweeney. And now the holder on the extra point. This is his first career touchdown. Will Sweeney, the holder on the extra point. This program entrenched with joy, fun, joy and fun. When the sun joy and fun. Absolutely. You go yeah. for a stroll in the duck pond, you might get you might get hits. You never know. Get booed up. Very similar <laughs> to here in Clemson. Under nine minutes to go. Hall has been great in kickoff return today. This time brought down to the 22-yard line. Took one back for a touchdown earlier. Oops. Sweeney's son with a touchdown a moment ago. Absolutely. It's a key block, though, by Cannon Smith. Cannon Smith's been fantastic blocking on the perimeter here in the second half. Jet sweep, little flip on the outside. You see the key block by Cannon Smith. Sweeney puts his foot in the ground, gets north and south, and Dad likes it. Way to go, son. Yeah, got two of his boys on the team. Got a ninth grader who's a very good athlete too, Coach tell us this, in a couple of different sports. Tell you what, he's he's a type of coach you'd want to play for. Keeps it fun and serious at the same time. And they get a lot of W's out at midfield, complete to Fitzpatrick. Nice throw down the field by Malik Cunningham, hits him on the deep post. Well-placed ball, Nolan Turner 
Not in very good position. I don't even make a play on the football in a big game for this offense. Stands in the pocket, delivers, tipped in, incomplete. Intended for 2-2 Atwell. Well, it's not just week 10 of the college football season. It's statement Saturday. Double dip for you. College football implications on the line. Number 14, Penn State. Taking on number five, Michigan. Then number four, Notre Dame against Northwestern. 7-15 Eastern, 4-15 Pacific. Both games on ESPN and live on the ESPN app. So you can watch the game anywhere. And the get back coach, I'll tell you what, he's getting a good work out there. Good smothering as Cunningham got smothered and tackled. What's funny he gets is, worn out. What's funny is I've been watching <laughs> Coach Venables down here. They're up 77-15, and he's 77-16, and he's acting as if, you know, it's a tight ball game. You know, Adam Smotherman, I talked to him before the game, and I wanted to find out this get-back coach. How did it originate? He said it went back to the 2013 season. <laughs> coach Venables was on the field too much. Dabo said we need to try something. But really, that first game of the 2014 season, he called upon Smotherman to be the get-back coach, and it's been a match made in heaven ever since. <laughs> Blitz coming. That pass complete. And down to the 31-yard line is Jalen Smith, their top receiver. Jalen Smith. He didn't have one at Oklahoma, right? No, he didn't. He, he was no, he was, was he penalized. You remember him getting on the field and being uh, penalized? He was all over the place. Okay. But and his intensity, his passion, love for his players, so demanding of his players. But what I like, and I was talking to Adam Smotherman about it, he's the same every single day. He's consistent and he's intense in everything that he does. Guys love playing for Britt Whitaker. Cunningham into the end zone and incomplete. Intended for Jalen Smith. Well defended by Kyler McMichael. I'll tell you what. Look, at, look how intense he is. 77-16. Yeah. You think it's 7-6. He doesn't care. He's going to coach every snap the exact same. And it's been year after year after year. Phenomenal defense that he leads. Now, he's got great players. He helps recruit them. But he puts them in such good position. And one of the, one of the great defensive coordinators in all of college football. And I can tell you personally, one of the great guys and coaches. If he ever wears a tearaway jersey, that get-back coach is in trouble. Oh. Atwell couldn't catch up to it. Incomplete. He was matched up against Jalen Williams. Linebacker running downfield with him. It's a matchup they want to try to exploit, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Atwell, smaller, quick, shifty. That was a heck of a player. Watched him play his high school football at Northwestern High School. One of the top football programs in the country, always nationally ranked. And a shout out to Luke Campbell, who continues to do great things in the community down there in Miami. Put kids in great positions. Down the seam, incomplete. Intended for Marcus Riley out of Tallahassee. Fourth down, Fourth down and they're going to go for it, obviously. When it comes to Miami athletes, nobody knows him like you, Jonesy. You got him, man. Dade County, I'm, I'm down there. I'm in amongst them. In the barbershops, at the parks. Some great kids, some great parents that do their best. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. They're going to push it back a little bit. Bobby Petrino talked about the great recruiting visit he had at the Atwell household. Mom and dad there, a lot of relatives and friends in the neighborhood while they were actually filming that documentary on the Liberty City Warriors. Fourth and 15. Blitz coming for Cunningham. Gets out of harm's way. What a play. And they get the first down. And there's some Dawkins inside the 10. First and goal. This team is still playing right to the final whistle. Malik, Give the Cardinals credit. Malik Cunningham, he shows some great playmaking ability. Pressure comes. It's a blitz. Boy, he's fast. Man, he is very fast. Pressure came, he evades the rush, gets outside the pocket, finds Seth Dawkins on the sidelines. Excellent pickup on a fourth and long. 
Keeps it himself. Tell you what, those Clemson players defensively are fast too. Nolan Turner got there to push him out of bounds on the sidelines. It'll be second down and goal. I was surprised we didn't see some Malik Cunningham earlier in the game. I told you guys yesterday, I'd asked the coaching staff about that. I kind of felt like maybe they wanted to run the football, possess it. You know, Malik Cunningham was the only Louisville player who had a 100-yard rushing game going back to Western Kentucky. And I thought maybe he'd give an added dimension to this offense, but we didn't see Cunningham until the game was well out of reach. Second and goal. He's been productive, though, yes. since he's come in. Well, he wants to get on the field and stay on the field, too, so playing highly motivated a whistle and a flag on the field false start offense number one five-yard penalty second down dusty i asked bobby petrino at the half if he thought about putting malik cunningham in at the quarterback position and he said no he said he wasn't planning on it so obviously he wasn't getting any answers from juan pass he wasn't planning on putting cunningham in at all at halftime though and interesting molly because pass did come into this game with a little bit of a successful streak he had three or four games passing for over 300 yards before today it's Clemson defense a different animal over the middle completed the five yard line caught it's going to be third and goal Devonte Pete making the catch tell you what the wins are going to be tough to count for Louisville for the rest of the season. Tough remaining schedule. They gotta go to Syracuse, which we know is a hot yeah. and very difficult place to play. NC State, a quality team. And in Kentucky, who you mentioned earlier, yeah. a rivalry game, and Kentucky's playing some great football. Yeah, they got a big one today. Hand off between the tackles to Wilson. And Colin Williams, Wilson makes it down to about the three and a half. When you consider their schedule, it's tough to Think about where the next win's going to come. Dino Babers has his team playing great football into the top 25 at number 19. It, if I'm going to be honest, I don't think they get another win, but if they did, I think it'd be NC State. What about the rivalry game with emotions and all that? That no? Kentucky defense. Too good. Man, the way they run the football. At Betty Snell. Man, I don't know if they get that one. Kentucky's team seems like a team on a mission this year. That well in motion now sets in the slot. Over the middle, out of bounds, incomplete. Intended for Pittsburgh. On the field, an incomplete pass. They gave it a run. 3.51 to go. We'll be right back. 15 schools all on one network. A new place to call home. The ACC Network. Coming August 2019. Exciting project and first down and ten. New quarterback in the ball game. That's Darian Kendrick. And Dixon, the talented true freshman who's already with that run, I think, now has gone over 100 yards. Boy, they, they even their their backups, backups, backup got some crazy skills. He can make you miss. We've seen the tremendous burst, speed in the open field. Man, they just Kind of come at you in waves, Jonesy. Talent all over this Clemson football team. Well, the Tigers probably be watching tonight as Alabama takes on LSU. Down in the other Death Valley, this is Kendrick. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary after that nice run by Darion Kendrick. The numbers all favor the Tigers. 448 yards on the ground. I'm not sure what the passing number is in terms of their quest for balance. But if you get that many rushing yards, Dusty, aren't you really kind of nitpicking after that? It's tough. I mean, it's, it's tough to uh, strike balance when you're at 448. Hey, that's like watching a guy walk on water and say, oh, look, he can't swim. Come on. You had three running backs <laughs> over 100 yards, right? None of them even have 10 carries. So think right. about that. Yards per attempt. Been pretty incredible today. This offense has been able to do now. I mean, Louisville is this the best football team you've seen this year? Yeah. I haven't seen Alabama. The, okay. I've watched them live. Okay. Yeah, this is, right. I mean, I, I could have told you that okay. in Atlanta. You're going to play with my words now. Okay, let me rephrase the question for you, Mr. Dvorak. 
Hold on, though, first. We're going to go back to the studio first. Guys, Auburn down 24-14 at one point late in the fourth quarter. Then Jared Stidham finds Seth Williams. They take the lead, but AM has the ball over on ESPN. And coming up next on ABC, Ryan Finley putting together a solid year for NC State, playing host to Florida State. That coming up 3.30 Eastern. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Florida State on the ropes. Third down and eight. Hendricks going to keep it, trying to get to the corner. Does and turns it north-south. Brought down inside the 40-yard line. Okay, so you've been watching too many of those court TV things and lawyers asking you questions. You say, I ask you a question. Is this the best team you've seen? You're like, oh, I haven't seen Alabama in person yet. Okay, is this the best team you've seen either in person or on television on ESPN or ABC this year? I would have to say Alabama is the best team I've okay. seen, okay? But right. in person, it's Clemson. I'm going to say this. It's not by much. I mean, it, the, the yeah. margin of difference between those two teams is uh -huh. not much at all. I mean, okay. again, li like you asked me on the onset, I don't think there's many teams in college football that can play Alabama tight. This team can, and I expect at some point we're going to get to it. They will. Something about this year feels a little bit preordained between Clemson and Alabama. As we head into the first full Saturday in November, we're going to run it again and gain a couple of yards. I mean, one of the things that's tough for Alabama, I mean, like Tua, right. talk about Lowell, 25 touchdowns, zero interceptions. He hasn't taken a snap in the fourth quarter, yeah, Jones. That, that's kind of crazy. So, like, when they're getting off to such unbelievable leads in the first quarter, and by halftime, these games are over. You know, it's, it's tough. I, I can't wait to watch them. If they get into a tight game, how he plays in those moments. We saw him in the national title last year, but this season, really been no close contest to speak of. And hand it off again. Renter a yard shy of the first down. Well, Sports Center tonight after Cal Washington State on ESPN, Stan and Kevin. A look at who's on the move in Tuesday's college football playoff rankings, plus a full recap from Lakers Trailblazers and what's up next for UFC champ Daniel Cormier. Sports Center, 1 30 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 30 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Pounding it right up the middle at Louisville again. And that should do it. Babo Sweeney and his Tigers improve to 9 0. With a 77 to 16 convincing, complete, comprehensive, wall to wall, goal line to goal line win against Louisville. This one was never in question. Almost five.